Let's look at the teams then. Artu Boruts, the uh, Bournemouth first-choice goalkeeper, returns after injury today. And there are also changes in the back four. We expect Adam Smith to revert to right back with Nathan Ake at left back. In front of them, it's the usual pairing of Dan Gosling and Harry Arter. While in midfield, Jack Wilshire returns. He was ineligible, remember, to play last week against his parent club, Arsenal. A game in which striker Callum Wilson scored a penalty in Bournemouth's somewhat unfortunate defeat. Despite making eight changes against Leeds in midweek, Liverpool's victory extended their unbeaten run to 15 games. Lorius Carrius, one of the regulars who returns today, along with Nathaniel Klein, Dan Lovren and James Milner. But Joel Matip is out injured, so Lucas keeps his place in the back four. It's the tried and tested Liverpool trio in midfield. However, that injury to the inform Philippe Coutinho means a change in attack where Divock Origi gets his first Premier League start of this campaign. Adam Federici and Brad Smith drop down from Bournemouth starting 11 to their subs bench. Liverpool include youngsters Ben Woodburn and Trent Alexander-Arnold who both did so well against Leeds in midweek. Well for Bournemouth, and despite recent defeats, Bournemouth have already won four Premier League games which is twice as many as they've won by this stage last season. Almost perfect condition. Here he is again with a lovely through ball for Klein. Two in the middle. And he looks for a re yeah, Just got a little bit too early, if anything. I don't know what he did, to be honest with you, Al, because he seemed to get that Liverpool. This was the early one where Rigi really should have scored, I thought. And we say it so often, it just doesn't get those feet sorted out. When you've scored in your last couple of games, you should be full of confidence and fully expected him to stick that one in the back of the net they're just struggling to find a pass Bournemouth to get from back to front and they down the centre and beats the goalkeeper to it to get another ball away 20 minutes gone and Sadio Mane who's been such a huge success since his move from Southampton has scored again well, I don't think anybody in this stadium is particularly surprised. It was definitely coming, and it's just come in a simple fashion. A ball through the middle, which OK just gets done for pace, doesn't it? Doesn't it for Mane? He's got to get a bit of physical contact on the Liverpool player. Get across the line of his run. It's a really good finish from him. But too easy from Bournemouth's point of view. Far too easy. and hits it in early for Origi. Goalkeeper's got to win this race, and he hasn't. What a finish that is. Forget that first miss, that was something special. Liverpool race into a two-goal lead. Well, that is a magnificent finish from the boy who I said should be confident, and boy, did he show his confidence there. Arthur Balic will not be happy, but once he got his up to this first but he either didn't see any question that he was going to finish it it's not an easy one far from easy but he made it look that way that's devastating from the striker from that angle it looked like an empty net I doubt it did from Origi's angle Mino thought about having a pop himself and did in the end. At the moment, they're even more dominant than they were in the early stages of that game. Could that change here? Did well. Yeah, one or two thought that was an own goal. Stanislas does well actually here. A bit of space and makes use of it in a way that they haven't done often enough. Bournemouth. That's their best moment so far. Controversial moment as Liverpool break. 
just knocks the ball past and there is a definite clash of knees but for the beat and it's Wilson who loses possession at the half time whistle Liverpool will go in with a fully deserved two goal lead Mane scoring the first one and then Divock Origi getting the second Bournemouth had a decent penalty claim plenty for the boys in the studio to discuss when we come back Milner, but equally, Milner will know all about it. As Bournemouth get the second half underway, Liverpool have in. They've got their first corner of the second half out of it. And a teasing little ball in. Bodditch would have tried to fist this, I think, rather than catch it. Yeah, Cook just being his goalkeeper to it. Given away here. And Fraser goes down, and this time the referee came to the point of this play. Well, what an impact the substitute has made. He's only been on the field a minute. Well, when you have turned up penalty appeals in a match for referees, uh, quite naturally you see it so often when they give the next one. James Milner doesn't complain about the decision you can see why really does look a pen I think it's the first penalty Liverpool have conceded this season and the kick will be taken by Callum Wilson who of course scored from the spot a week ago against Arsenal mm, he went left on that occasion to his left Exactly the same penalty, actually, as at the Emirates, this one. Not in the corner, but sending the keeper the wrong way. And I said the next goal would be important. How important? We will find out. Wijnaldum. Mane. Lucky to get it back there. But he's making the most of that luck. Chan with the shot. Oh, what a shot it was! Liverpool restore their two goals. Thanks to Henry Chan. Well, we've seen two special goals out here today. Both from Liverpool. Origi first and then Henry Chan with this first-time take. Bournemouth won't be happy they allowed Mane to get as far as they did, but that's just all about the purity of the strike. It's a lovely one from Chan. And one that might just take the wind out of this Bournemouth fight back. The German international scores his third goal of the season and Liverpool are back in the driving seat. Okay, in support. Going all the way and getting his cross in as well. And he's come out to the substitute who caused a problem certainly for goalkeeper Carriers. I don't know what Carriers is doing there, saying he's inside the bats. Callum Wilson does ever so well to keep it going. He's earned the corner and he'll take it. <laughs> well, it was a claim that that might have gone over the line there, but of course the uh, referees have technology on their side. He was taking the chance, wasn't he? Oh, Boric. Must have been a relieved man here. Look how close that is. We're talking millimetres there. The wonders of technology, eh? <laughs> I bet he was grateful for it. And I bet Arthur... Well, the set. The Bobby. And here's Fraser. That's a good ball too. Chance here. And the Fulby missed it. Plays it behind it. Didn't. Well, he's had a remarkable cameo in this game. What a penalty. Now scores a goal. 15 minutes to go. Ball with the back in it again. Well, he's shown the way forward, has he? Two more experienced teammates. He tries to set up Callum Wilson on the counter. 
Wilson can't make anything of it, so Fraser decides, well, I'll do it myself. Just takes it a little bit too wide to start off with. What about this, though, for an accomplished finish? Gets plenty behind it. Just wondering about Carriers here, whether he could have done a little bit better. He's just getting back up to his feet. it forward quite far enough but Russo wins it back and finds Fraser again good cross by him and got the equaliser it's Cook who scores it it's 3-3 it's game on well in a game of special goals we've just seen another one here from one of the least likely candidates Steve Cook the touch and the finish He's absolutely exquisite. He is the touch of a Sergio Aguero, never mind about a defender like Cook. What about that? It's spectacular. And full marks to Bournemouth the way they've got themselves back in here. Well, a week ago, Steve Cook held his head in embarrassment for the Sunday league era against Arsenal. Now he scored a Premier League quality goal. He enjoying Bournemouth's contribution in the second. As a bogey, threatens another. Carriers to the rescue for Liverpool. Well, they're all over the place in the centre of that Liverpool defence. They really are. Lovren and Lucas can't sort it out. What an important right hand that is from Carriers. I think he knew much about it, to be honest with the keeper. Lovren got up well. Origi! That's a great effort. The touch and spin. He just got under the ball a little bit. Cut it. Steve Cook one. Second half performance here, but he still wants his side to get that winner. And Lalana able to provide it mm. on this occasion. A little bit of space, he's dangerous on both feet, Lalana. The Bournemouth have looked more solid after changing that back four with RK going to last ten trying to make more, most of this long throw in Smith has gone forward as well Richard heads it on okay. just so glory beckoning Equalising goal. His long throw in towards Francis. Headed away by Lucas. There's Jordan I. We know where this is going, don't we? Oh, Pimbeal is going to be there. Bulldog has snatched it right at the death. Nathan Ake completes a remarkable turn. Well, if Steve Cook acted like a striker with that previous goal, so did Nathan Ake here. The poacher's effort, anticipating the fact that Carreras would not hold on to it. I mean, it's a pile driver from Cook. He does move in the air, and Ake is Johnny on the spot to take full advantage. I thought we might get another goal, and that surely is the winner. What a match we've had here. Incredible. Just when you think the Premier League can't surprise you anymore, it does. Listen, the referee's had a glance at the watch. Wobram plays it in, the goalkeeper is a safe match. And that 
could see Bournemouth home. Well, he must have feared a drubbing at times in that first half, Eddie Howe. It's one of the shock results of the season as Bournemouth bring Liverpool's 15-match unbeaten run 